Good morrow and welcome to this discussion about the early fur trades in North America. We think of it as being such an interesting and novel idea to be looking at the fur trades in North America, but the reality is, if you think about survival, what do people need? Food, water, and shelter. And animals provide two of those. We eat the meat and then we have the hides that can be used for moccasins, for uh, trousers, for shirts, for bedding as robes. So people have been processing and trading hides for thousands and thousands of years. It's one of the earliest trade items that can be found anywhere in the world. Well, what's the history of Fort Walla Walla? When Lewis and Clark reported back to Thomas Jefferson in 1806, they said the best place to set up trade is where the people have already been trading for 10,000 years, and that's Wallula. On the Columbia River coming down from Canada, flowing south, the Snake River had been flowing north and turned west and met the Columbia River. The Tapteal, later called the Yakima River, uh, entered just north of that, and then the Little Walla Walla River. So there were four rivers that came together in that one place, Walula, where the waters come together. If you are a people who do not have a written language or maps, how do you inform people about where to find you? Follow the river. And where the rivers come together, that's where we will be. The Northwest Company set up the first trading post at Walula in 1815. It was no more than a shed, but they had their trade goods in there and the native people could come in and they could bring their beaver pelts and say, I want some of that calico cloth. I want one of those awls. They could pick out their items. In 1818, the first Fort Nez Perces was built. It was palisaded 20 feet high. The outside fence was 20 feet high. The inner fence was 12 feet high. So it had two fence works. That means if you were able to breach the outside fence, they were still looking at, down at you from 12 feet above to be able to protect what was inside the fort. When the Northwest Company was operating, there were a lot of people at Fort Nez Perce's later uh, Fort Walla Walla. There were some 36 Mohawks. Some people call them Iroquois. Iroquois is a confederation of tribes, but they were mostly Mohawk tribal people. There were 32 Kanakas from the Owyhee Islands. They were the, the best navigators in the bateaus going down the Columbia River, and then when they came to the ships, they would also navigate and sail those ships. There were 26 uh, voyageurs, French-Canadian Métis, and then there were the various and sundry Scottish managers who came and went over a period of many years. Then some interesting things happened. The Hudson's Bay Company and the Northwest Company were not friends. There was a battle in the Red River area. The Northwest Company was traversing the river and the Hudson's Bay Company came out and told them that they had to turn over all their furs and could not continue. A gun battle broke out, and at the end of the day, there were 19 dead people. I believe all of them were Hudson's Bay. At this point, the Crown intervened and said, we're not going to take this. We're not going to have this violence out here. You're both supposed to be representing the Crown. And so we've come up with a solution. The Hudson's Bay Company is going to be required to purchase the Northwest Company. The Hudson's Bay Company took over in 1821. So what happened in 1821, almost on the very first day, was the Hudson's Bay Company said there are too many people. And they discharged more than two-thirds of the staff at Fort Walla Walla. Later, the fort was destroyed by fire. They rebuilt it with logs but covered with adobe. And that was later destroyed and then when the Indian Wars broke out, eventually the Hudson's Bay Company said, we're done. So they continued to struggle by until 1855 and then abandoned the fort.